a lot of people want to lose weight, Ken. Why do you think most diets fail? Well, I think most diets fail because we the 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 tenets of the average diet that's promoted by the average doctor or dietitian is a calorie restriction diet. And they they're going off the one of the laws of thermodynamics that they misunderstand. They think that applies to human digestion and human biochemistry. And it does not. It does not because the human body is not a closed system. Our body is an open system. Uh, for example, my, my skin is being exposed to the ambient temperature of the air in this room right now, which is too cold for Nisha, but just right for me. That, that means I'm open to the air. That actually ha- that affects all the calculations that you would try to do to figure up my caloric needs, my caloric intake. Secondly, a calorie is a unit of heat measurement. It's not a unit of digestive measurement. It's not, that's not even what it's really meant for. You can roughly approximate the caloric value of foods, uh, some foods, with how much energy we're going to get from them. But uh, you and I both know you can't, you can't count the calories and protein. That's ridiculous. You're, it's idiotic to try to pretend that you can do that. Many people forget that, that fat, they, they were, you know, so people are like, well, you can't count the, pro- the, the protein calories calorie for calorie because we use that to build with and repair with. Well, we also use fat for hundreds of things in the human body. It's not just a fuel source. We can burn fat very efficiently for fuel, but we also use it to, to make and remake and repair and rebuild every cell membrane in our body. We make all of the hormones from the, from the pregnenolone cascade down uh, with fat with with cholesterol we use that fat to build things with we use fat to repair the myelin sheath of every single axon in our body and so if you even pretend like oh we can count all the fat calories as as calories as energy because you're going to burn all that again that's that's a very sophomoric way of looking at this because that's not true at all really the only macronutrient that you probably should count all the calories is carbohydrates. And then you've got the, the, the fiber argument. You've got the, you know, then they're soluble versus insoluble. And so every single diet is a calorie restriction. You need to move more and eat less. Now, many of them are starting to not say that anymore. But when you start to look at, oh, what are the free foods versus the, the foods that count as points? What are the red foods versus the yellow versus the green? However bullshit way they want to break the foods up and say, oh, you can eat as much as you want of this, but limit this, avoid this. It's still calorie restriction, which basically means energy restriction, which basically means that you're, you're going to stop eating before you're satiated, before you're completely full. Now, Every animal on the planet, if you feed them, and let's just call it what it is, it's food restriction, right? Because the average person walking the street doesn't understand the things and know the things that you and I know about food, that there are some foods that are nutrient dense, and there are other foods that are basically devoid of nutrients, even though they taste delicious and they have lots of calories and carbohydrates, they're really deficient in any kind of meaningful nutrition. Most people don't know that. So they, they try to limit all foods. And so they wind up being chronically hungry. And any animal that you, you take, you trap any animal in the wild, put it in a laboratory condition, and you feed it a food restriction diet. And it's either going to commit suicide or escape because that is literal torture for a mammal to say, stop eating before you're food, full. That is, that's, that's, that's anarchy. That's complete idiocy. To tell a mammal, stop eating before your before your body tells you to stop eating. Uh, no other animal, first of all, can do that because they don't have the, the prefrontal cortex to make that decision. They run on the, the hard wires in the back of the brain that's like, no, dude, you're not full. You need to break out of this effing cage and eat the experimenter because you're not you're, you're going to die. You're not eating enough food. And so every single diet is based on that underlying premise of eat less, move more. That's always going to fail. And so some there's, you know, there's millions of people running around on the planet who think of themselves as a failure because they're overweight, they're obese, they're morbidly, severely obese. And it's their fault because they could not adhere to this completely inappropriate anti-scientific strategy that they were given. 
move more, which is going to make you hungrier, but yet eat less. And so I think that's why we see so many success stories in the keto, ketovore, carnivore community is because those foods are nutrient dense. Those foods do activate the satiety hormones, of which there's a list that the average doctors forgot. They learned it in first or second year of med school, but they forgot them because then for the rest of their career, they're told, you know, move more, eat less, and here, here's some fentanyl. Here's some whatever, you know, the new diabetes medicines that help you lose weight because they basically- Have you seen that? The sem- yeah. The sem- oh, oh, yeah. They're, they're going to make so many billions of dollars off that. And it's it's complete ignorance. And, and there will be repercussions and ramifications from that. There will be disease. And probably some of these drugs in the next five or 10 years will be taken off the market because it'll be revealed, oh my God, yeah, you did lose weight, but also you got thyroid cancer or all, you know, also you got this other- devastating medical condition because you were taking this drug long-term trying to hack into a system that you didn't need to hack into. When you eat a nutrient-dense diet that's full of healthy fat and healthy protein, that's either high-fat, adequate protein, or high-protein, adequate fat. I don't care which. Uh, it seems that different people, on back up to that, that Gaussian distribution curve, some people like a higher protein, adequate fat diet. And I think the fat, the fat intake has to be adequate or you're going to you're open yourself up for disease or high fat, adequate protein. You got to have adequate protein. There's no ifs, ands or buts about that. But for on somewhere on that scale is the satiety that people are looking for. It's easy to lose weight, which we, when we say lose weight, we mean lose unnecessary fat. That's what we want to lose. We don't want to lose bone density. We don't want to lose muscle. We don't want to weaken our, our connective tissue, our fascia, our tendons, or our cartilage. We want to lose the excess stored fat. And so the way you do that is to keep the insulin level very low by eating a very low carbohydrate diet and eating adequate protein and adequate fat until you are comfortably stuffed. And when you that's the sweet spot. And that's why keto works for so many millions of people. And that's also why it's sustainable. Because think about the sustainability of eat less, eat, stop eating before you're satiated, before you're full. That's, that's madness. That, that, that is never by definition unsustainable in a mammal. There is no mammal on the planet that will do that. And humans try to do it. And we do it for a week or a month or six months. Uh, but and, unless you get to that sweet spot of getting adequate fat and protein and keeping your insulin level low enough so that you can access your stored fat, you're going to fail either not going to lose weight at all, or you're going to lose weight for a few weeks or a few months. Then you're going to stall because it is unsustainable to starve a mammal long-term. And that's what you're ultimately doing with calorie restriction with, with stopping eating before you're full, you're starving yourself. And that is, that is by definition unsustainable. It'd be exactly the same thing as telling someone, look, you're breathing entirely too much. Uh, all that oxygen you're breathing in, it's 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 causing reactive oxygen species. You're causing ox, you know, oxidant, you're causing inflammation. I need you to only breathe five times a minute. And any any doctor, any physiologist is going to be that's madness. What are you talking about? Somebody could maybe breathe five times a minute. You do that for a few few maybe an hour or two, but then if you when you when you fail because you will, are we going to call that person a failure? Or are we going to say, are we going to, we would just back up and say, well, that's obviously ancestrally inappropriate. It, it's, it's species inappropriate. And humans are supposed to breathe 15 to 20 times a minute. If you're exerting yourself, you're going to breathe more than that. That's perfectly fine and ancestrally appropriate. But we, we never recommend uh, air restriction as a, as a form of, of anything. It's also equal, equally stupid to recommend food restriction as any kind of uh, way to attain a health goal.